Welcome to Is Anybody Listening to Me podcast with Azar in the Meat. We have our special guest Jarvis for entertainment purposes. He always gives us a good laugh and brings his NFL expertise. Uh, I'm sure he'll be disappointed. We will not be diving into the Young Rock again because I think based on the tone of their conversation together, it seems like the fizzle is already fizzled out. But uh, <laughs> uh, I can see him shaking his head. All right, Big Meat, how's it going tonight? It's going good. It's going good. And yeah, just, just to say, just to touch on Young Rock, <laughs> the third episode was on the other night, and I think it got worse. It did. I didn't know <laughs> if that was even possible. And the thing is, too, they actually had uh, more wrestlers in oh, this episode bad. than ever before. And you know, they introduced <laughs> the Macho Man. Macho Man for, finally came in. And, um, and it was, it was lame. His interest, like he didn't do anything funny. He didn't say anything yeah. funny. They, they focused a lot on the junkyard dog and he was kind of lame. It just, it's not it's good. Not so good. do you remember so, so the, 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 you, renewing young rock? Is that what you're wait, telling me? Wait, wait, Aza, don't go that far. Don't go that far. However, do you remember, did you watch WWE in like the, the late nineties when they were, um, making fun of like the Monday night wars and they had the character Gilberg. That little yes. scrawny guy. When I saw the Macho Man, I couldn't help but think that it was like the mockery of Macho Man. And it was this scrawny, right. like his hair was like kind of matted the same way, but it just looked awful. And I was like, oh, my God, what are we doing? Yeah, he, he didn't. He didn't, he didn't sound didn't anything good. like it. it no, was the he did it. He did I had it. such high expectations. So, I, you know what? I hated episode three because it was it's like becoming a documentary about his father and like almost like a tribute to his father because he was never really a popular wrestler. Like once WWF a mainstream and you saw that in the third episode, he kind of got left behind in, in, in the smaller promotions and not brought up when WWF was going big in the mid 80s. He, he didn't come with it because he didn't make it to any WrestleMania. He was cut out before then. So. Right. You know, so you can like, I feel like the story's about that. And I really, I really would have rather it stuck to like the rocks view of their shenanigans in and out of the ring than yeah. like their well, story. Well, I think they try to do that, but, but yeah, but at the end of the day, too I don't much really, about the dad. it's too much about the yeah, dad and the I, mom. If it was just more wacky humor, if it was a little bit more yeah. like the past, if it was a little bit like the past, then I would, <laughs> then I might have enjoyed it a little I have bit to more. Ask. It's just, did you watch it? I did not. I did no. not. I couldn't. I couldn't, no. couldn't pull that trigger on the past. <laughs> no. Oh well, at four a.m. one day when you have when you're sauced and looking for something to do, you know, just flick that on. Just flick that on. Don't watch it sober. Four a.m. He's still I playing ask. cards with COVID boy in R three. What are you talking about? Well, that's right. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> He needs a better reason to be up than that. Well, you gotta, we got to wait for the next uh, MMA fight. That, that's, that's when we right. got together. We watched the late MMA fight, and hey, we don't feel like I'm, going to bed. I'm, we could watch the past. I'm there. I'm vaccinated. I'm good to go, baby. There you go. <laughs> good. I'm going to oh, unleash, unleash fury on <laughs> society. All right, big meat. Well, we, we didn't really want to dive into the Young Rock, but I, I couldn't resist um, just at least touching on that just for a little bit. Uh, but you have let's just kick it off on our usual pattern. Uh, we always have a segment when we have something new to talk about. You have a new whiskey that you wanted to introduce to the group. I do. Yes. And I actually uh, got this uh, as a gift uh, because it's a scotch whiskey and I, I typically don't drink uh, scotch but this one's actually a, a pretty good one it's called uh, highland park uh 12 year old viking honor it's a single malt uh scotch whiskey so um I, we've talked a lot about bourbons on this podcast we talked a lot about rye whiskey we've even had uh irish whiskey i don't know if we've ever actually introduced a, a scotch uh on on any of our podcasts here so this is kind of a new thing um it's not bad it's really strong <laughs> It's strong and it burns and it's, it's, uh, and it's, it's a smoky, very, very smoky. Uh, the drink, uh, it is, it is from Scotland, uh, part of Scotland called Orkney. And they, they describe it as if you're, if you're the way the website, I'm on their website, uh, reading their description, it talks about if you're looking at a vast, uh, Viking kingdom. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it sounds pretty badass. It's like something the Vikings, uh, uh, were drinking, but it is pretty strong. Uh, like I said, very, very smoky, very smoky. And if you read the uh, the description on the website, it sounds like something 
what is what is the what's the nickname for is it the super spreader i think you guys know who i'm talking about is that, yep. his, is that his nickname super spreader the way he describes his his foods and his and his uh <laughs> and his and everything that he he he, he makes and, and he eats so the way they describe it here it's got a flavor with of heather honey rich fruit cake with winter spices oranges and a smoky peat and it's best to try it with a haunch of venison, chocolate ginger biscuits, soft cheese such as French brie, and even Japanese sushi and wasabi. It sounds just like something like like super super spreader would have wrote, but that's what it, it says. That's what you so, want to try. So basically, you're telling us it's a plain egg with nothing on it, maybe <laughs> yeah, ketchup on the side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it just looks. Uh, I was gonna say it looks kind of fancy, but it's not really not really even fancy looking. It it's, just it's looks like a plain pile of mess. Egg. It's the plain egg with ketchup on the side and a big toe in the bottom corner of scotch. That's what you've just described it as. Thank you. R three had the best that had the text of the week the other day when he when he said that. I, I burst out laughing when I read that because <laughs> I said, "Yeah, that is exactly what he would say." But uh, yeah, so that's my drink there again. Scotch. You know, if you're into scotches, this isn't this isn't a bad one. This is pretty good. All right, that doesn't sound very appealing the way you described it, but. Uh... Sold. <laughs> if you like scotch and you like a smoky scotch, this is so, this is the one for you. What's the corn? Is it a? Is it a, from Scotland? Is it? Is it a? Where is it from? It's Scotland. Yeah, I mean it's scotch, right? It's all. It's all really from Scotland. So it's. I think so you actually a, read where it was from. Orkney. Orkney. Orkney, to be exact. Yeah, that was what was on. Oh, okay, uh, so it's not some like generic someone trying to make a scotch in the states here trying to. Sell it. No, off. no, no. Well, it wouldn't be scotch if no. it was from the States. Aged well, in sherry season, European and American oak casks are 12 year old boosts warm, wintry spices. Again, this is something <laughs> super spread. He, well, you're talking about like Vikings and all that. I wasn't sure where we were going with this. I'm like, Azar I'm like, got lost. <laughs> Geographically, Azar got lost by the description. <laughs> it just, they call, it, the benefit of history is that we have chosen which Viking values to continue. Their pride, honor, and in Scotch fierce independence. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they call it Viking honor. That's Island why I'm, Park, so, that's why I'm so confused. I didn't. I, are Scottish feel, Vikings? Yeah. Didn't you watch um, Vikings? The show or you were thinking more uh, like um, in the Nordic region? Yeah, that's more where you would find. I didn't. Really, uh, I would never think Vikings were that far south down. I thought they were more northern. Vikings were in America, yeah. Azar. Don't you know your history here? Yeah, but north, like going through Greenland, Greenland Iceland, like they. It's a straight it's line through England. You get straight across. Boom. You cut it right off. All right. I, I am mistaken. I do not know my uh, Viking history clearly, but I, did get I didn't really know that either. I always thought the Vikings were just specifically in the Nordic region. That well, let's that save it for another podcast and I'll whatever. educate you all on the oh, Vikings. Lord. Oh, if it's okay. anything like your trench warfare discussion, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a, a hell of a podcast. <laughs> There'll be a disclaimer on that one. There are people interested. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Right, we'll find somebody. We'll let you know. <laughs> All right. Um, I basically, the only thing that I just wanted to touch, I, I'm diving into that whole craft beers type of thing. And I did uh, share the, to the group that I was going to share a beer on this podcast. And uh, it was called uh, Outhouse Ale. Now, unlike me, <laughs> where the description <laughs> was more exotic and appealing, this one, but the guy at the, at the liquor store, uh, Craft Brewery, right? Is that the name of the place? Is that the official Craft name? Sellers. Craft Sellers. I apologize. Um, Craft Sellers in Nashville, New Hampshire. I was recommended to go there, and the guy recommended it. But it was, it's called Out, Outhouse Ale, and it's a coffee oatmeal stout. Tasty. I mean, you can tell it, like, like it's a small operation because it's just basically a can with a sticker around it with an outhouse in it. But I got to say, if you like stouts, um, it's a pretty tasty beer. It's 5% alcohol, so it's not overwhelming um, if you want to have a couple. But it is dark. It's like a thick, dark beer. So if you like stouts and it's still kind of wintry weather right now, I give it a recommendation to try it. So that's it. That's my simple recommendation. You know, not as, again, not as flavored with spices and there's no Viking backstory so, to mine. <laughs> super super spread is not going to be impressed by it. That is that. Is that no, no, I, I I I'm not a storyteller when it comes to my food. Yeah. So I just eat my food. I don't need to. I don't need to tell a story or take pictures of it to promote it. So. <laughs> and then with a with a uh, a fistful of of mayonnaise <laughs> topped on top of it, 
<laughs> and then talk and then say it's like oh, caviar so or something. Gross. Yeah. yeah. No, Perfect. It, it was perfectly poached. I think you said it looked like some <laughs> sneeze <laughs> <laughs> on a on a plain piece of like Wonder Bread. <laughs> Market basket, white bread. Yeah. All right. And then I think, was that the same one that had the, uh, still had the, the yellow craft cheese single with the cellophane on it? No, no, I don't think was so. Was that a different one? There was... I mean, there's been so many. I don't know if I, oh, I, I, I don't man. recall that one. So. It was like a, it was like a fried egg with yellow craft cheese in cellophane <laughs> with like a pretzel roll. I think it was. It's like, come on, what are we doing here? I'd rather see your big toe. Ugh. I'd actually rather see uh, the the the, over, the the poached egg and stare at those toes. All right, it was the, well, it was the, me- it was the Mexican inspired cheese that, uh, <laughs> that, that 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 really got me <laughs> with an array of special sauces or whatever. <laughs> Just it was great. Uh, oh man, he is a character. All right, so uh, I think this is the part where uh, our man Jarvis said he's going to go and get a gin refill because we're going to talk about one division. And before he starts blowing a gasket, so we'll we'll let him step away. And I won't take you with me this time. All right, I appreciate. It. Yeah, no, we don't need a toilet break like last time. <laughs> yeah, and no, no, uh, no minute straight of uh, of me giggling yeah. <laughs> as he's doing that. But you know what is funny? It's if you ever watched Naked Gun when he's in the bathroom at the stadium and he's pissing and it's on the speaker. That's what it felt like watching him. He was yeah. standing there, and it was like the never ending piss. He was just standing there, and we're like. And meets dying laughing. He can't stop laughing while he's piss, pissing, and it's just like it was never. I couldn't even get my th- I couldn't even get my my point across. <laughs> like, what is he doing? You couldn't. You couldn't even breathe. So well, I, I thought you were going to ask me a question, and I wanted to be punctual on my response. <laughs> we can wait until you're done. Like that, that's okay. But appreciate it. All right, big meat. While well, he's making his next drink for himself to make this a three-hour podcast with you. Uh, Let's get into WandaVision. So episode eight, we're down to one more episode before the season, which is the season finale. Mm-hmm. And, it is. Uh, you know, it was more of a, I don't know how to call it. It was almost like a flashback to kind of connect all the dots back to basically Wanda at, at, at that point. Uh, but then she basically, during that period, there was a big reveal. So again, if you haven't watched the episode, guys, there's going to be some spoilers. Fast forward at this point. But it was it was kind of an eye opening episode. And, and basically we get the introduction of the Scarlet witch for the first time. And she gets the official title of the Scarlet witch, which you and I have been calling her the Scarlet witch forever. And I didn't nev- I didn't realize that they were saying they never actually referred to her as the Scarlet witch ever in any of the movies. Right. Did you know that? <clears throat> I, I did. Cause they, they did hint at it. Well, they didn't hit at it. They actually said it, I think back in episode four, when uh, the director of sword, there he was talking about it and he said he said oh she doesn't have any uh you know fancy nickname or any superhero name and and uh they were actually kind of discussing that a little bit with that jimmy woo character okay so um i, yeah, I, I so, completely missed that i i just yeah because it was it was almost as if like they wanted to wait to fully introduce her as officially the scarlet witch and now that she, now that she has the full powers that she has that she shows in the comics I think now, they wanted to wait for this series to do that. So I wanted to ask you about that. So I was a little confused, and I know you do a lot more back research, and I, and my wife and I were scratching our heads with this. In that scene where the Mind Stone is somehow connecting to her, right? Like it comes to her, even though the, the, the Hydra, they're sitting there doing the experiment with her, and they're not seeing anything happening, but she's seeing the stone like envelop mm-hmm. her with powers. She sees a vision of a figure, which they say is she's seeing herself as the Scarlet Witch or whatever. Yep. So if that's how she got the power, how did her brother get the power? Was it because they use the same right. <clears throat> stone? So so what they're saying, that's a good point, because because I didn't really think about uh, about it too much about her brother. But what they're saying is that she was born with powers so all along, all these Marvel movies, uh, when she, when, when Hydra was doing those experiments on her with the Mind Stone and she got her powers, remember, they were saying that they were experimenting on a number of people and were dying from it. Yes. And they, yep. were the first, they were the first ones to survive from it. And at the time, you just kind of chalked it up as like, ah, whatever. It's just, you know, they just survived from it and now they have powers. 
Well, now with this WandaVision series, now they're they're dating it back to saying that she had those powers all along and the Mind Stone just kind of magnified those powers. So so, so I'm her, thinking because her brother, her brother that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Maybe something with her mother. Maybe she was like a witch from, you know, remember the, the big flashback back in Salem, Mass with the uh, the trials that they had with with Agatha's character. Maybe uh, maybe her mother, maybe her ancestor was there in, in part of that group. Who knows? I think that's probably time's going to uh, eventually going to reveal a lot of that. So it seemed like they always had those powers, like when when the Stark bomb blew up their house and forever since civil, uh, since uh, Age of Ultron, we always just assumed the bomb just was a dud and it didn't go off. But now you learn that she was actually doing what they look like a hex on the bomb. So it doesn't go off. So, so she was the reason she saved her brother. She saved, she prevented it from, from that Stark industries bomb from going off. Okay. Yeah. And, and, so, I, and so, do recall that. Yeah. I do call it that reference. It just, it just brought that question where my wife brought it up, to be honest, I, it wasn't my original thought. And I was like, you know, that is a good question. I'm not really sure because they focus so much on her. You know, you would yeah. think, they were confused on what happened and did the same thing happen when her brother was exposed to the stone? I, I'm just kind of curious well, how well, they're going to tie that up. Yeah, Marvel has to get, they're, they're getting creative with it now because of the whole contract dispute with, with Fox and how they couldn't use the mutant's name because in the comics, they're Magneto's kids. So um, so that's that's kind of like they can't, they couldn't have used that from the start and say, oh yeah, they were mutants and they were their father was Magneto, right? They, now they got to get creative yeah. and say that she was a witch and she was born a witch. And I, you know, they're, they're going, they're, they're trying to, trying to get creative with the whole thing. So, um, so yeah, I, I think it was, it was a decent episode. I liked the, a lot of the flashbacks, um, not too much action, but it kind of explained a little bit more. And I think those commercials were pretty spot on, you know, the first commercial with the toaster yeah. uh, in the first episode, yeah. that was basically, you know, revealing that the, the, the Stark bomb that was ticking away and it was making the same like beeping sound. So, um, although I was a little disappointed, I actually thought, I think I said it before that the, the two characters in the commercials, they play the, it's the same actors play in those characters. And I thought those were her parents, but then in the flashback, it was two completely different actors playing her parents. So I was a little, I think I was, I was wrong about that. Cause I think I tried to call that a few, a few podcasts ago. <clears throat> Yeah, it, it just it was an interesting episode. I feel like, uh, you know, and, and I did a little reading afterwards, and it I think more you're probably spot on more and more is that you're not going to get a reveal of a major villain other than Agatha, and then now the White Vision is going to be like the villains that this is going to finish. I think this is going to be a slow buildup of introduction of the other chaos. I I mean, yeah. Chaos, did did you hear they, what? Did you hear what? Um... Uh, and I forget the actor's name, the guy that plays Vision. Uh, did you hear what he said today or yesterday? So, so remember when I said uh, he was interviewed and he said, oh, there's going to be a big cameo coming up. And, uh, and I, some guy I loved, I've always wanted to work with this guy. We kept thinking it was, it was Dr. Strange and all these. So now he comes out and says, no, that was all a joke. The guy I was referring to was myself. You know, so so he's like, see, I say something and everybody takes it. And all of a sudden, everyone thinks it's all these big actors. So yeah. now I'm thinking, eh, maybe Dr. Strange doesn't appear in the uh, the last episode. I think it's yeah. just going to be I think it is what it is. It's going to be one episode, which is also the longest episode so far. It's going to be 50 minutes long. Uh, still, still not that long. Right. 50 minutes, but longer than any other episode this season. And um, yeah, I, I don't think uh, I don't think we're going to see any other major villain. I don't think we're going to see any other major character. Um, but still, still, I you know I've enjoyed the season. Um, I know Jarvis has enjoyed this season very much. <laughs> it, you <laughs> he know, doesn't see one episode, but, but people like I, it because of its creativity. I think that's a lot of the feedback yeah, that I read on. It was different. Diff and they did do yeah. a good job. I, I didn't like the way it started. I'll, I mean, I'll be honest. You got to get through the first couple two episodes because it is kind of confusing and it's right. weird. But once you get through it, I think they did a good job of buttoning up. And I'm kind of bummed. I was looking forward to a big villain reveal or something. And and you're right. I don't think Doctor Strange is coming. The only thing that they did say now that um, and I was trying to find it that because she is her powers are like this something of chaos. I forget the terminology mm. they used. I was trying to find that. Yeah, yeah. like chaos magic or yeah.
Yeah, yeah exactly. she has that unique power, yeah. and that chaos magic is tied to a specific villain um, that they were referencing. But I'm just I'm having a hard time referencing. I should. I think you're, I down. think what you what you heard was what I heard and what I read uh, was Dormammu, which who was in the uh, the first uh, Doctor Strange movie because in the comics they refer to Dormammu as the Lord of Chaos. Okay. So I don't know if that's what you read as well. That's why he has I, multiple I thought, names, right? Doesn't he have different names? Like he doesn't just go by does. that name. On- he does. Yeah. He does. That's why. But he's the only character with uh, with chaos that that's kind of reflected into his name. So I thought maybe he was he was kind of the big villain. And if you see the movie from Doctor Strange, if you look at his eyes, they're the same color purple that Agatha uses in when she when her eyes light up. So, you but know, see that- it's. But there was that's kind of, kind of confusing then because it didn't Doctor Strange banish him and made a deal with him never to come back, right? Because he was he able to trap him. Yeah. So how would they bring him back? Like that's kind yeah, of a. I, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, but that's that's you know I mean they, they're they're definitely gonna bring that character back in some way. I always thought they were just kind of holding him back for a later Doctor Strange movie for him to come back. So. I think some some way he comes back. It's just a it's just a weird coincidence that they both have that same purple color. Yeah, that that, that comes out of them. So well, it, it'll be interesting. Well, uh, we don't have to wait long because this podcast we, we typically we record on Tuesday and dump on a Wednesday. We're recording here on a Thursday, so we only have to wait one day to get a, all. Our, we might be wrong in everything we've been saying, so mm-hmm. it's just gonna, we don't have a couple of days to process this. Um, all right, so we'll, that's basically. I'm going to hold off until a full recap of WandaVision until after we watch the season finale. So let's, let's move into the nostalgic thing that I know you're a big fan of the eighties and love anything eighties. And, and one of the movies that came out, which I can't believe it's came out in the eighties. That just blows me away. was coming to America. Yeah. I didn't think it was that old. It's I, actually I can... on TV as we are speaking right now. It, is it really? Yeah. It's on uh, Paramount. I think. Oh, that's, you, I watched it again a couple of weeks ago on Amazon. So you can watch it right on Amazon. Oh, is it free? Like with the unedited yeah. version? Yep. Oh, yep. I have to watch that. Okay. So yep. Coming to America is a is one of those movies that I always find if it's on TV, I do enjoy stopping and watching. It was one of those silly – it's no pest, right? I mean, there's no yeah. classic like John Leguizamo. But, you know, you have Eddie Murphy who I think is one of the funniest. Like he does – he's so – diverse in his roles but i always find like anything he's in he's just funny and i don't care what it is even if it's action like beverly hills cop which is like comedy slash action i always i love eddie murphy movies but that is like a cult classic in my opinion i love Mm -hmm. coming to america and i'm so excited for coming to america too because you know it's going to be cheesy there's no way it's going to be a good movie i just feel like this is something (laughs) they probably gave eddie murphy a ton of money and said it's like a netflix special with like some of these like comedians that you, you you can't wait to watch them and then you watch them like they pay them like 10 million dollars and they're terrible right like how many like these netflix specials are out there like that but coming to america too and they bring back arsenio hall to reprise his role they bring um and he played that character in the first one before the arsenio hall show came out yeah that's what right? launched so his it career. was like that's what kind of yeah. yeah so i mean you think back how long ago that show his show was it was a long time ago. And that early movie 90s. came out before that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was early 90s. Because I remember being in high school and our senior hall show in the dog pound. When you go, hoo, 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 hoo. Right? So, uh, yep. that, and I know he starred with Eddie Murphy in Harlem Nights with, with Red Fox. And um, I think Richard Pryor was yes. still alive then too, right? So, he was the main, like the main star. And Eddie Murphy played a role in that movie. And our senior hall was the silly like he was a silly uh, uh villain in it but um yeah so coming to america too i, I yeah it, it I looks funny the trailer no i'm excited for it i think it's i i enjoyed the first one um i like eddie murphy just like you Azar. i i, yeah. I do like uh i like those two characters together uh james earl jones is back in it yeah so it'd be, dr be back. Him again i know <laughs> his voice doesn't change no matter how old that guy gets that voice never <sighs> and you know i alters. just I keep dreading the day that his name pops up next to Sean Connery's now. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that guy yeah. doesn't have his days are numbered. Him, Harrison Ford. Like, I am dreading the day that they're. Oh, how about like a Morgan Freeman? Us. Like Morgan, Morgan Freeman, Freeman had, too. He has that unique voice that when you hear it, you're like, you just stop. And uh, 
Yeah. Uh, they should just record those guys in a studio and record them, say every single every word, word, every sound. Dictionary. So they Here can always the duplicate dictionary. that. Yep. Here's read $10 million. dollars. <laughs> and they've got to say dictionary. it so many different ways too. Like yeah. they got to say it softly. Yeah. They got to say it while they're yelling. But so it's that's like every, every single one. Read the dictionary and also say the word in every, every tense, in every form listed yeah. in the definition. <laughs> got to preserve those voices. One oh, of the God. funniest things I ever saw James Earl Jones in is he did an episode of Big Bang Theory. Now, if you ever watched the show, he played a, a, like a cameo role in it. And he was, if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil it, but you got to go because well, I know all the episodes of Big Bang Theory are on HBO Max, but if you can find a way to get it and see it, it is the funniest episode. Cause, and it was still when Carrie Fisher was alive because he was actually playing um, Doorbell Dash on Carrie Fisher's house and harassing her and stuff like that. And he was, he was the, the, like, they go to, uh, I think they go to a strip club with him, like, like Sheldon goes to a strip club and then they go to a steam together. And it was just an awesome awesome episode to see him like that he's such a great character <laughs> but but today i was reading that this, they were saying how the studio made them put in a white character like they were like yeah. hey you have to have someone like, that you see that? yeah and, I they did, picked, yeah. and they picked louis anderson as the yeah. white guy oh. yeah and, yeah and he wasn't even that funny he wasn't funny at all in it it wasn't anderson. like it's was kind of like a meaningless the, the podcast part. talking like louis anderson ah <laughs> 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 he I, I was thinking they were saying like he was someone they both worked with. They knew him. And I was like, was it Eddie oh. Murphy on Saturday Night Live? And he worked yes. with all these great guys like Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray. Um, oh, he, he wasn't with, on with them. But he knows those guys. He Didn't was. He he also, you could no, have said was. Mike Myers like or season. Adam Sandler. No, no. No, Eddie, no, Eddie Murphy was before those guys. So Eddie yeah, Murphy he was, was in the early years. Yeah, way back, way back. He was he only with, on Saturday Night Live for like a year or two. He I don't think he was on with Dan Aykroyd and, and Bill Murray. Are you then. sure? Yeah, uh, I they think were, he was. I think he I don't, was. I don't think so. No, they had the um, who was the other the other guy and oh, the other black guy. That sounds terrible. But the one that yeah, do you understand? You know, the guy that was yelling in the little caption there, that wasn't Eddie Murphy. He was the only he was the only ethnic yeah. blend they had in the beginning. And that was the beginning when those guys were on. Then they phased off. I think Eddie Murphy came in on the, the like the 80s around. Those guys were gone by then. But anyway, not here, no there. Oh, we have to dig a little bit deeper on that. I swear when they do like some of the highlights when he did Gumby and all those things, I thought it was around that same era okay. with those yeah, guys. Yeah, like when he did like the 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 spoof of like Mr. Rogers neighborhood. I yeah. thought that was thought that was back then. Yeah. Well, anyway. I'd I'd have to look it up. I don't want to waste too much time on it. But anyways, I'm excited about it. So we'll have to give it a good review. Biggie. So so one one quick thing about uh you know, re rewatching coming to America a couple of weeks back. There was that scene. Remember he walks by a couple of homeless guys and yeah. he drops like a bag of money on them. And it kind of, yeah. it almost seemed like they were two relevant characters. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like why Trading are they focusing places. so much? It yeah. was, yeah, exactly. I had to look it I up. I had no idea. Really? I never, oh I never watched. I never watched trading places. Oh, I've never seen on. it. No, I, oh. I haven't seen it. What? So I was looking, I'm like, who are these guys? Like, why do they make it such a big deal about these two characters? And I said, Oh, I get it. All right. So it's, I guess it's a, I guess he stole their money or he yeah. made them lose their money. And now it's his way of giving back their money. It was kind of a, kind of a nice little, Nice little callback to that. But no, I haven't seen Trading Places. Oh, that's that, a great movie. That, God. That is a classic. So, so Eddie that's Murphy. A, Jamie Lee he, Curtis, right? Wasn't Jamie Lee Curtis in that movie, Jarvis, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, maybe. Um, it was Dan Aykroyd was the husband. It was, was, the it was Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, it was, it was Dan Aykroyd and the other, um, oh, the guy that he reminds me of one of the old, old Muppets. He was, it, it was the two of them just sitting there with the old school stock tickers coming out. Yeah. And they were like, buy pork rinds, sell, you know, and they had it in their little limousine. Yeah. And oh, what? The, and it was Eddie Murphy. And. Who's the other guy? It was he because he was the original homeless guy. It was Eddie Murphy and somebody else that were homeless. Don Amici and Ralph yeah. Bellamy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're the two yeah. guys. And um, Jamie Lee Curtis was the girlfriend. Uh, the, not the girlfriend was the. Um, I think she was a prostitute, technically. I think when Dan Aykroyd <laughs> hooked up with yes. her and she helped bail him out. So, yeah, that's a classic movie, John, uh, Big Meat. You got to watch that if you so, haven't seen it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm willing to watch it. I'm not. I'm not going to be like uh, Mr. Roper and, and hold out for for years and years. So 
I'll, I do have I'll to watch it. I'll take your word for it. I want to let you know that Eddie Murphy was on Saturday Night Live from 80 to 84, and Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray were done in 79. Oh, he just missed them. Really? Just missed them. Chevy oh. Chase was done in 76. So Belushi was done in 79, although his brother was on for a while until 85. Um, so, yeah, I did. And Dan, no... Ac- Dan Aykroyd? Dan Aykroyd wasn't? No. So there was. So 19. So Dan Aykroyd was done in 79 as a full time cast member. And Eddie Murphy started in 1980. There may have been appearances where there could have been an overlap or two, but as cast members, Eddie Murphy was 80 to 84, Aykroyd 75, 79. Um, same thing, Bill Murray was. The hell's Bill Murray? Uh, Bill Murray, 77 to 80. Okay, so he okay. might have overlapped just a little bit with uh, Eddie, right? You said yeah, 80 so to Murray, 80. Yeah, so Murray was on his way out in 80, and Murphy was on his way in in 80. Wow, yeah. okay. Wow, it seemed like they were all – what a blur. I thought they were all together. At no. least it was some overlap. I know they didn't all work together the whole time. Yeah, but... they would have come back and done, like, guest appearances regularly at the end, right? But not necessarily, like, the prime okay. cast. All right. Well, we're, we're going to be moving on to s- some fantasy news. But I, I, I guess if you're going to watch – if you're looking for something to binge watch on this uh, weekend, I definitely say find Trading Places, watch that first, watch Coming to America, and now watch Coming to America too. Perfect weekend of movies right there for you. So, because at least the two Trading Places and Coming to America sort of tie in together, like in a little way, like a little cute way, but both great movies. If, um, if you want to watch a couple classics before you watch the new revised Coming to America, that's so, good. Right, now that's I got fine. a movie. Now I got a movie to watch. Yeah, I gotta see where any it is. Places? If there's any platform that's carrying that movie, I always watch the. I've never. I've only seen like the TV edited versions of it. I haven't seen the R-rated version of Trading Places in a long time. Yeah, he must so. have been really young because that that movie came out in '83. Yeah, '83. So he must have been early twenties because he played he played a twenty one year old in Coming to America, and that was in '88. So I think he was what twenty. Seven, if I'm doing the math, because he was born in 61. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it wasn't that believable that he was a 21 year old kid in that movie, but whatever. It was because uh, I said, oh, gee, he plays a 21 year old. It looks a lot well, older than 21. He also plays a white guy. He also plays other characters. That, like, char- that is true. That is true. The <laughs> Jewish guy in the barbershop, he, that, was, that was the best character because it didn't even look like him, didn't sound like him. Like he, he pulled that off perfectly. Yeah. So I, 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 on, on Google, the power of Google, as uh, our three would say, if you have stars, stars comedy actually has trading places. It's going to be on this Monday. And if you have Encore Black, <laughs> it's on tomorrow night at 1030. Just letting you know. <laughs> okay. Wow. It's, Encore Black. I don't have but, that. But. but it says it's actually on Hulu Premium. So I, I'd have to look. It's, maybe it's on their on-demand selection. Maybe they have it available for you if you have Hulu. Okay. Just let you guys know. All right. Let's get into fantasy um, as we tie up some of the podcasts in this last segment. So the biggest fantasy football news that was relevant, two things, I guess. Big Me brought up one. One is probably less relevant. Actually, like all these other news, I guess I would say none of this is really relevant. Like, But they're news. So J.J. Watt gets, gets, leaves Houston, basically, and goes to Arizona. I forget. Did he get traded or did he was a free agent? He was a free agent. Yeah, he, he got released. He, he yeah, had he got off, released. Yeah, he got really. He asked for his release, and he had offers yeah. from Cleveland. He had an offer from Tennessee. I think it was Cleveland. Tennessee. It was definitely Cleveland, and I think Tennessee. And I maybe in, Green Bay. I fell into the Twitter thing that some guy had his Peloton name was JJ Watt. And yeah. He wrote down Buffalo. Like he wrote down Buffalo, Cleveland, and I was like, oh, maybe he's going to Buffalo. I was telling my friend yeah. from Buffalo. And then it, you find out he doesn't have. Azar loves Buffalo. Azar <laughs> loves Buffalo. <laughs> I have friends from that coworkers that are from Buffalo, so I, I, I just give him props because it's just oh, Buffalo, know. Kansas City. He's I was gonna, just gonna, gonna say, John. Yeah, I was leading him into it. He is the most impressionable <laughs> fan I've ever met in my entire life. Who were you hanging out with in the early two thousands that told you Tampa Bay was worth rooting for? Ah, Mike Allstott. I saw a picture of Mike Allstott. Someone because I I follow Tampa Bay on Twitter. And, and they had a picture. Fantasy? Oh, he was in his he was in his basement with all his like Mike Allstott jersey, the helmets, and 
Yeah. It's like a I'll have to take I'll have to take you to his restaurant down there. It's right near it's it, I've been to it many times. I I I'll be looking forward to it. We have we have some points still waiting to That's go right. down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, we do. And we gotta and we gotta make sure we, we find out when the schedule comes out so we could do do what we tried to do last year and, and do the schedule uh yeah. and try to book a trip and say, okay, before the we uh, were off by air, one week. Airfare. Yeah, we, we were. were off we had, by and one then, week. but we were still able to to adjust it, right? And, and yeah. No, uh, no penalty yeah. or whatever. No penalties. And then, uh, of course, uh, COVID, COVID blew everything up. So, so yeah, we got to remember that this year before the schedule comes out. Right. Yeah. We will go to Tampa. We I'm will go to Tampa. It. it will happen. Yeah. I'm not going to call. All it right, Azar. Anymore. JJ Watt. He yeah. gave up. He passed on more money from Cleveland and. It's not important, but I think Tennessee. He passed up two contracts to go to Arizona. Yeah, and he's he's Chose. not getting paid a lot of money to go there. I was surprised when the saw the contract numbers. Two years, yeah. what thirty one million? Yeah, it's not, yeah doesn't seem like a lot, right? I mean, fifteen and a half million per year. I feel like for a yeah. guy of his caliber, he would right. he would have gotten more money than that. Now, well, their John, defense is terrible, right? Like I, I, well, I mean, I they lost to us. So what does that say? So my point is, is <laughs> their that, their, their offense was, well, that was like their best. There was, that it, was their worst game by far. But if yeah. you to go to a team, like they're not a Super Bowl contender, like they're not even close. They need a lot of fixing. Well, I don't, uh, I don't know they if they're close? that far off. I don't think they're that far off. They were I, I, eight I, and eight and they lost a lot of close games. I think, yeah, I think Kyler I think Murray, they need, you love Kyler Murray. I do love they, Kyler Murray. I think he's going to. They, they, at best, they'll be a wild card team. They're not going to get in winning the conference. I don't know. I don't know. What are you so confident in the West right now for? I think the Rams are still structurally better. Ugh. With who? With Stafford them. now instead of Goff? But their defense is still solid. They're losing, they're losing a bunch of free agents. They can't oh, afford to pay. Oh, remember, as, of, as of today. As of today, they're still better. Unless they, well, like, once the cuts start happening, we'll see. But remember, but. but remember, they still their defense wasn't as great as they could have been last year. But they did lose... Uh, Chandler Jones, I think like five weeks into the season, I think he tore his biceps muscle and, and he was out for the season. Do you know who leads the league in sacks since 2012? This is my my Chandler Jones tip of the day. Chandler Jones, you know who's second? JJ Watt. JJ Watt. So if Chandler Jones could stay healthy and having those two guys, and do you know how many times uh, teams double teamed JJ Watt last year? Do you know what the percentage? This 92. is what I read. Not that high. 30%. 30%, which is highest in the NFL. It was the highest in the NFL. So if Chandler Jones could, could still, if he could stay healthy and he could still perform the way he has the, the few years prior to that, or really throughout his career, um, it's going to be, that's going to be a tough tandem to stop those two guys. They're going to get a lot of sacks between those two guys. And you can't just go and double team one of them anymore. So I do think their defense is going to take a big step up. Next you season. know what? I have to apologize. I'm looking at their rank uh, compared to the rest of the league. And across the board, uh, they do a color code of like green is like you're in the top 10 and yellow is the top 20 in the teams. They're pretty much, they're pretty much a average team. They're, they're actually a much better defense than I, number four in sacks, uh, number 10 in passing yards, 10th uh, rank, uh, seventh in rushing touchdowns. So, you know, it seemed like all those games were kind of shootouts with them. I always felt like the defense yeah. was – so it was just an illusion, I guess, really, if you're not watching enough of their games. Their defense is better than they looked. I apologize. Yes, and I think that they need the presence of somebody like J.J. Watt to kind of galvanize them and keep their heads on straight. I think they were – like Patrick Peterson was there, but I don't think Patrick Peterson has – he, I mean, he doesn't have the same credentials. He's one of the best corners in the last 10 years, but he's not. I mean, he's just not J.J. Watt presence wise. And I think yeah. that I think that Watt coming in and like being that like rah, rah, let's get together, keep your head down, you know, kind of guy. I think th I think that could really go a long way. But that's why Arizona pulled out all the stops to recruit him. They knew they couldn't match Cleveland's dollars. So they had the unparalleled unmatched recruiting team of Frank Caliendo and Blake Shelton deliver the contract to JJ Watt and convince him to sign it. Wow. Frank Caliendo. Frank Caliendo. Did they really? Yep. The impersonator. Yep. yep. 
Frank Caliendo and Blake Shelton went to JJ Watt via Zoom or whatever, I don't know, and recruited him to Arizona. That was their sales pitch. That, that's what convinced him. I could see Blake yep. Shelton. He's a big, big country star. Well, but... you got to figure like Kevin Durant turned down Tom Brady, right? Tom Brady flew to the Hamptons with Danny Ainge to convince yeah. Kevin Durant to come to Boston. But it all they needed was Frank Caliendo and Blake Shelton. Can I, can I ask you guys, I, I need you guys to confirm something. When you think of the, the Patriots defense, I mean, where do they rank in the end, by the end of the year? Were they in the top 10? I think they were in the top 10. Maybe, were, for, right? like, maybe for points allowed. They didn't have a ton of high scoring games against them. So I, I mean, get, based on this calculation or this calculator thing that I like with this thing, this grid, Arizona's defense is 13th overall in the league. Yeah. I just wanted to give you, but even it's interesting. They're 13th in the league. And I told you they're pretty much average across the board. They did really well with sacks and things like that. But I, now I know why my impression was bad. They're ranked 29th in points allowed. So they yeah, did give up a lot of points. So They got into some big shootouts. Like they went into three yeah. overtimes against Seattle. Yeah. So th- I think that's the impression is I feel like their scores <laughs> were always high. I that that remembers that game. <laughs> you can, did you hear the tone in his voice? He's uh, yeah. It's like, well, they went three overtimes in that game. If they so, went so angry, if they only went one overtime. <laughs> so, from a fantasy perspective, does that put Arizona's defense now with JJ Watt? Yes, because yeah, I think the, the Seahawks are on their way out because Russell Wilson drama is going to just sabotage that team. That team is going to tank something fierce because now there's no stability. Wilson's pissed off. Everybody's going to start. It's just going to be the Wild West up there. Carroll's going to go because he, he's going to lose the locker room. I think the Seahawks are going to fall apart. The 49ers, if they try to reset with Garoppolo and mess around, like even if they don't, just the fact that Garoppolo hears all this, the team's had injuries the past, in the past couple of years. I don't, they just, you know, they they peaked, and I just think they're on a downward spiral with salary cap, with, you know, failing draft picks. And then I, I just, the Rams, I just don't have faith that the Rams are going to be able to hold. They put so much money into that team the last two years that there's no way it can be sustainable. They're going to have to cut and take cap sacrifices and have, you know, your cap casualties. And they want to keep Aaron Donald at like a billion dollars a year. Like there's just no way they can hold this thing together because they were drafting high for a long time, time to pay those picks. And they all hit all those defensive picks hit. And now it's time to pay them. Well, they Uh finished number one last year. So it'd be interesting to your point. You're right. So, I mean, Seattle, I, I think Rams as of today is the team to beat in that conference because that defense is so solid. And I still think it's still a functional offense. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And it really depends on what San Francisco does. If they get someone like Deshaun Watson or they make a huge splash. All Granted, but like, like you said, I'm going off of what the landscape yeah. is today. Yeah. So I, maybe you're right. Maybe Arizona. But it is interesting to think of Arizona. I never would think of Arizona's defense in the past as a – so a, in, in, a defense in, I would draft early, like in my not early, but like actually draft sure. them in the draft. You know what yeah, I mean? A targeted yeah, and you, defense. And you said yeah. they were fourth in sacks last year. And and don't forget about Chandler Jones. If he could stay healthy, that's basically two guys that get a lot of sacks every year. I mean, Chandler Jones just two years ago had 19 sacks. So I mean, I mean, between those two guys, they could end up leading the league in sacks next year yeah but a lot of the sacks a lot of the sacks on that team come to azar's point they gave up a lot of points because they scored a lot of points so the teams were throwing on them and they were in down and distance a lot so chandler jones could just kind of tee off on quarterbacks looking to make the extended play A, a lot of those sacks weren't on like tight formation third down and short like gotta get it you know I, he didn't get a lot of those impact sacks as much as the stats lead so i will i will go the other way a little bit and say that the well, defense no, Chandler jones didn't didn't play at not, all like most most of the year he had yeah, one but, sack he yeah had but one it, sack throw the course of his career he's like even when he was with the patriots he racked up four sacks in a game once it was like fourth quarter garbage time sacks you know what i mean he's got a lot yeah, of that. but you you could say he's, that if he does it one year but he's done it now eight nah. years now i mean he's, he does yeah it but every the team year, hasn't been very good i'm just what i'm saying like the team has always been offense and and to, like to Azar's point, they've never been a good defense or a defense that you think about. And I think Jones has been a benefit of teams and them in track meets and, and you know, five linemen, spread them out one on one. See you later. And Jones can beat a guy one on one. But like if they bring in some tight ends, he'll disappear. 
So I do think that Jones has been a benefit of the situation, the situation, and maybe with Watt there, he'll be better at more impactful times. And I think those sacks will mean something a little bit more. That's that's all. I just don't think they, the timing of this of of the sacks of his throughout his career mm. have been. Okay. But, but regardless of the individual stats, the team as a whole is you guys are projecting to, is going to finish in the top ten as defenses next year with the addition of JJ Watt. So that's that's fantasy relevant. So that is a fantasy relevant trade then at the end of the day to be a top yeah, ten po- po- t- defense. The uh, fantasy points wise, yeah, they could be um, they could be right up there as a viable defense if somebody hoards two in the early rounds. And you know yeah. how much I love Kyler Murray. I do think he's going to take I another like step forward and another year with DeAndre Hopkins in the system as well. I think their offense as a whole is going to be even better, which, which now, could who's the running helping back? out the defense. Uh, now, I don't want to go on a tangent on it, but Kenyon Drake's a, a free agent. Do you, are they bringing him back? Ugh. Are they drafting uh, a running back? I don't know. I don't know if they're going to bring him back. They didn't. They have. They had another guy there that if they were splitting time for a little while. Chase Edmonds. Yeah, they do like Chase Edmonds. Uh, they can draft a guy in the fourth round and stick him back. That'll be fine. Right. They Should be interesting. To... So that so as looking at it, Arizona finished sixth in de- in offense, and they yeah. finished thirteenth in defense. So with the addition of JJ Watt and to Meet's point, it could be a you know a top tier team next year. So there's a lot of there's a lot of I'm weapons. Saying. I mean, not a lot of weapons, but between Kyler Murray and Hopkins, you got some two good weapons right there, and you got a good defense. So they're draftable players. There are people to look out for targeting. Yeah, I, Andy um, Isabella was pretty good last year in the slot. I mean, they have some up and coming receivers. Fitzgerald yeah. could still come back and be a serviceable slot receiver, a possession receiver. He's got better hands than the crap we were throwing out. Yeah, that's true. So let's go to the next fantasy relevant news: is the resigning of Ben Roethlisberger. Oh. What a surprise! But, I, you know, I was thinking about that when Big Meat said it. And we said, yeah, is it really that matter? Does it matter? But when you look at them from an um, offensive perspective, they finished number one as in pass attempts and pass completions. So that, that's Roethlisberger throwing the ball. I mean, that's him. He threw a lot. 50 times a game. I know. So, so that's a good thing from a fantasy perspective. If you're gonna come, they, they have a great defense. So it wasn't like they were always thrown because they were behind. They just – I mean, and this is to compare it. They were 32 in rushing yards. Um, they right. were 32nd in rank for running. Yeah. So they had no running game. They so they had run. to throw. And that caught up to them by the end of the season. But if you're drafting – now, I'm not saying you're drafting Roethlisberger. But you have the stability of the quarterback you know. He has some great receivers that he's going to throw to. So you know they're going to be getting a lot of targets again. Did They have to unless they get a, a free agent running back or they draft a stud running back this year. Right. But now, based- now Juju is a, a free agent, so yeah. I think they might lose him. But they still have Chase Claypool, Claypool, yeah, and who's the other receiver there? They had another guy there that yeah, uh, like a Washington or something. I don't know. They had some yeah. generic um, names. Yeah, Deontay, it- De- no, Deontay Johnson. I'm sorry, Deontay, Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson. Yes. Yeah. and yeah, he was yeah. good. He was a good. Yeah, he's, he's a good. rookie, right? So, no, no, no. Uh, second year. He was a rookie two years. Second Claypool, year. Second Claypool year. Claypool was the ra- rookie. Right, right, right. So those two guys, I mean, I don't know how Pittsburgh, I wish the Patriots could do what Pittsburgh does, because I feel like year after year, they, they develop these these receivers that just come out of nowhere, dating Perfect. all the way back to Factory. Antonio Plexical, Brown. And, yeah, Plexical these Burst. guys, just every year, they just develop Emmanuel these guys. Where Sanders, these guys right? come from? Yeah. Emmanuel so, Sanders was a stealer. I don't think Roethlisberger is going to be a guy that, I mean, he gets drafted. This is We talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago about, where where certain quarterbacks would go and he wouldn't be a starting quarterback for him. I forget the quarterback. Was it Stafford we were talking about? We're like, would you be happy yeah. with Stafford going into the season? He's another good backup guy. I think Jarvis, you had him on your team as your backup quarterback, and he did well. No, I had Roethlisberger. Just, uh, yeah, that's yeah, what that's I meant. Roethlisberger. Run. You had Roethlisberger oh, as, your, as your backup. Yeah. And um and he was just a guy, I don't think he was drafted. He was just kind of floating nope. out there. And by yep. week three, everyone's like, shit. Roethlisberger's got some numbers, like, and, yeah. and you just pick them up. So, yeah, will he be able to duplicate that again? He'll be a year older, maybe even less weapons now. Although Chase and Deontay, another year into the system, they have a good tight end. He, he wouldn't, yeah. yeah, yeah, he wouldn't be a bad, uh, you know, late round guy to to, to a take a risk on. Yeah. yeah, but, but know, I mean, yeah. by the by the end of the season, he did have decent numbers. 
I wouldn't focus on, on him to draft him per se, but I like that if I was going to draft his receivers, I like the stability. If I was going to draft the Pittsburgh's defense, I like that because yeah. I know Roethlisberger, like they're not going to have this bum quarterback that's going to cost the defense with turnovers and making a lot of mistakes and, and they're going to be on the field longer. You have, uh, I don't know. Have, I think Roethlisberger's mistakes are going up. He's but, getting but, careless with the ball. But he's more and... functional. Yeah, I mean, compared to if they're going to stick a rookie. and like, See, I don't know. I think they should have traded for Sam Darnold. And I think they should re-sign Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree is one of the best outside linebackers, the edge guys in the game. I mean, he was he's a big part of that defense, and they didn't replace him. I mean, maybe they'll draft his replacement, but you could just as easy trade the pick for Sam Darnold. I think they're only asking for a high second round picks, and, and the Steelers have a low first, so they could even trade, get more for their first round pick, like you know, a second and a third, trade the second for Darnold and then use that third to fill in another linebacker to, you know, or pay Dupree and, you know, draft another quarterback somewhere in there to put behind Darnold. I think that that was the, the best thing they could have done because Darnold still has another year of his rookie deal and like put him with those weapons in that line. And now you got somebody that is Roethlisberger five years ago. Yeah, but you know, there's there's nothing stopping them because they need a backup. Because Roethlisberger does get hurt. If they go into the season without a solid backup, look at look at how they get screwed before. Every time Roethlisberger gets hurt, their backups suck, and it costs them. They need someone viable. So why not take to do what you're saying? I, I think it's a great idea. Why not get Darnold? Put him in, I, in my in my scenario, they gave that 14 million to Bud Dupree, and their defense oh, didn't get saying. affected. Okay, well. I do think the Steelers, they're going to end up drafting a quarterback at some point to be the, the future. There's no way Ben's going to play another year beyond this one. This is his last year. Yeah, uh, He came back and that. said, I'm going to give it one more shot. But but there is something about Ben. You guys mentioned earlier, or I forget which one of you mentioned it, about him making mistakes. I think I thought last year he made less mistakes than what he has in the past. He was a guy that always led the league in – uh, the time he held on to the ball, like his release, just yeah. I forget how many seconds it was. For years, it was always like one of the last like, guys in the league. Yeah, like five, and, four or five seconds. And last year, he was one of the best in the league. So I don't know if he just learned his lesson. Said, "Gee, you know, I'm getting older. I better release. I better throw the ball a little bit. You know, two seconds a little bit earlier than two seconds too late." And his sack numbers were down. Everything was. You could tell he was that guy that would just drop back, hold the ball, hold the ball, hold hold the ball. Uh, a uh, you know defensive end would grab him. He'd try to fight through it, and then that's where the injuries would happen. He would try yeah. to do a little bit too much. He didn't do that a lot last year. So I thought if he, he continues doing that ne- this year, and I'm sure his receivers had something to do with that. He had better yeah, receivers last year. So o- he, had, he had ten picks overall for the season. Yeah. Thirty three touchdowns and ten picks. Yeah, yeah that's good not season. bad. But I feel, I feel like the and ten one picks fumble came. Lost. I feel like the 10 picks came at like critical moments in a lot of games. Like I just, I don't know. I just well, didn't feel like when, because I was, tr- I was watching him. Cause there were times where I Rogers had a, a, you know, a tricky matchup and I'm like, how do I go with big Ben? He's putting up numbers. And like, so as I was trying to track him, I feel like there were picks. At, so like, you're, so you're watching the Tennessee game. He threw three picks in one game. That's probably what you're reference. That's probably a memory that's burned on you. Three picks. Well, in no, one the, game. the Browns, the Browns game is the memory burned on me. The, the wild card four pick debacle where they got blown out of their own stadium going yeah. away. Uh, that's the playoffs. lasting memory. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a, yeah, but that's not the regular season. I'm trying no, to look no, no. Um so I mean Tennessee had a good defense. So they but that yeah. that's and that was the co- and that was the COVID game. That was the one that got canceled a bunch of times and they had to play like way later on on a Tuesday. That was yeah. the first really oh, messed up okay. game. All so, I'm saying with Ben is that he's a good he's a good backup QB to have. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. A great starting yeah. quarterback. He'd be he'd be one of the top backup QBs that you would end up drafting. Yeah. yeah. And I was just making the case that I like the stability for the receiving core. That I'd like another year of Roethlisberger just gunslinging because he's got nothing to lose. He's he's retiring maybe like you're saying after this year. He's going to throw the ball another forty times, even if he's throwing it forty five times a game. That's Do you know why that is, John? That's because Azar wants Chase Claypool as his sleeper this year, and he loves wants Chase. To he count on those yes. numbers again. He loves. I, I will he not confirm him. or deny that. Statement. He wants him, and the stability <laughs> of Roethlisberger means those stats are coming back. Three touchdown you, games, you could, maybe. 
you can always tell when Azar starts talking about a, a, a certain team or a play. Like, you know, like he mentioned earlier, he dropped like the Rams earlier. He's like, oh, the Rams have a pretty good yeah, offense. Robert you know, Woods you know, is there. You know that was all about Robert Woods. Robert that Woods. All, that's the only reason why he said that. He's got a, he's yep. got a certain love for certain players. I, if Azar I, has an agenda. You are the most agenda-driven podcast host. When my basement's finished, there. it's going to have a Mahomes, Robert Woods fat head. <laughs> I'm going to come couch. over with a Sharpie and put a big <laughs> L in the middle of Mahomes. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's just right. going to be. You, you got to have one where like his back is turned, where you can see the, yep. the name Mahomes on his yep. jersey. So I'm John, you, big L right in the of it. You guys are going to be like, Jesus Christ, what is this? He's got like, it's just going to be a mural to Mahomes <laughs> and these guys. Uh, <laughs> All right, so let's go to uh, our football talk. We went right into fantasy. Usually we do football, regular football, then fantasy, but we did it reverse. Let's go back to the Patriots. Like we were talking before the podcast, we want to talk about the upcoming free agents. And we were talking about, we each said we were going to pick what we thought was the biggest need in free agency that the Patriots should fill, what position, and what players is on our wish list, and what players... We like if if they don't get this person on our wish list, we hope they get at least this person because there's a need there. It's like we're gonna recommend a couple players, so we're gonna start with Big Meat. Let him go first and offer. What do you think is the Patriots' big need? We, we talked about quarterback. If you want to do quarterbacks again, you're welcome to. But I know we were saying we we're gonna try to reach, discuss other position players and you know whatever it is, offense or. This defense. is just out of free agents, right? Uh, the free, free agents, agents that are yeah, available. like on your wish list. So, of free agents right now. Yeah, I mean the Patriots, they need a lot. They, they do need a lot. And it's yes, like, where do. Where, do you, where do you begin? I mean, they need, they definitely need a quarterback. They need, uh, they need receivers. They need a tight end. Uh, I'd like for them to shore up a little bit at a defense. We were talking about a defensive, you know, pass rushing end for years. I feel like they haven't had that in so long. So um, it's a tough call on, on who they are. If I'm looking at the, the top list of free agents, I don't like Dak Prescott. He seems to be number one on a lot of people's lists. Um, I don't think Chris Godwin is is the answer, especially with his drop season that he had. It just kind of scared me that towards the end of last season. I don't like Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay. I don't know. I so if I maybe was going to pick one of the top guys, and I, I have one guy in in mind, but I'm not going to steal Jarvis's thunder there. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave leave that guy leave that guy alone. I'm saying I'm thinking uh, I'm going to go to what I thought. What I think that the Patriots are going to do a lot of next year is run the ball. Uh, I don't think they're going to go out and get this big name quarterback. I've said it before, and I've said it, I'm going to say it again. Cam Newton, is, I think, is going to be the guy that comes back and be the quarterback. I think they're going to try to rely on their defense and they're going to try to build up that offensive line. So I'm going to say the best offensive line uh, in free agency, possibly that guy Trent Williams. He's probably like the guy that I think is is the guy that I think the Patriots is on the top of of the Patriots wish list is to, to get him to try to, to try to shore up that guy, especially if they lose uh, Tooney and Andrews. I mean, those are two big pieces of their offensive line. You lose those guys, you know, what do you have? So I think, I think that would be kind of the guy that, that I think that that's, that they're going to go for is, is somebody like Trent Williams. That's interesting. So an offensive tackles you think is their big, I, I'm, right I'm, I'm thinking like Belichick, like that's, that's, kind of like exactly in Belichick's wheelhouse. He's that's, that's what he would look at. Let's let's work on the trenches. Let's either an offensive uh, on, offensive tackle or guard, uh, maybe even a center uh, or on the defensive line side of it. I think that's kind of where, where he's, he's kind of looking for to build on his team and work on the inside out. That's, I think that's Belichick's main philosophy philosophy. And I think Trent Williams is the top free agent offensive lineman out there. Okay. That sounds good. I, I can't disagree with that. I think they need that help. I mean, I think the running game was atrocious last year. And it, I think there was a, you could see that with the, in the run game. with the, Oh, their running game was good last year. I thought it was, it was good. I think it could be better. Yeah, that's what I mean. But I, I, that would be a, a big improvement in the, on the line, right? Someone like Trent Williams? Yeah. 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 And, and I, I did say this before. I do think they do bring back Tooney and Andrews. I do think they, they – you know, they. I think Tooney was a franchise. Uh, was on the franchise tag last year. He got paid good money last year, um, and he's not going to ask for a lot more money if they give him a big contract. So I think those two guys are coming back. Then you got get a guy like Trent Williams. You could end up having the best offensive line in the league. 
with, so, with, with that. So your impression of the Patriots offense is that they had, I'm, I'm just trying to find their stats for offense. They had a, they were 25th in offense in overall rank. And I got to say, John, I know what you're saying, but in rushing yards for the Patriots. Oh yeah. You know what? Maybe you were right. I apologize. They had they one of the forward. best O lines in football by, yeah. by the numbers. Yeah. So it's yeah, they ran the ball. A lot of it had had to do with Cam Newton also running the ball. So yeah, even even hit, taking taking him out of the, they just didn't pass the ball. I mean, how many passing touchdowns no. did so Cam the bright Newton side, have? Seven. So was their <laughs> offense? I mean, their running game completely was just right. their running game. So if their passing game was atrocious and like across the board, passing that's in the low thirties. What he's saying is is bringing a stable left tackle, and you get an upgrade in both. Like Trent Williams will keep that left side yeah. stable, but and, also be a bulldozer and i forgot to mention there were a couple of guys the patriots more so than any other team last year opted out because of covid uh marcus cannon was one of those guys so he was mm-hmm. one of their better offensive linemen now if he comes back too like i said they could really he might be having... cut i think they're gonna i think he might be cut they would well, say yeah, depending on this whatever salary yeah. cap implicated right. whatever it is but if they do bring him back you're talking about an even better offensive line this year. And I think that's where Belichick's mindset is at. He's, I don't care about the quarterback. I'm going to have a guy in there. He, lo- he loves Cam Noon. He spoke very highly of him. He might come back yeah. and they're just going to focus on the running game. And hopefully it's Damian Harris. That's why I yeah, think I agree. run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, preserve your defense. Um, and, you know, keep the other, so, keep the other offense off the field. I, I'm like watching this. I guess maybe I didn't because the games were so atrocious. I guess maybe I didn't pay attention enough. I didn't realize how much yards they were carving out in the run game. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just surprised as a defense, if you're playing against the Patriots and you know Cam has a noodle for an arm and he can't throw it, he's throwing it into the ground. Why were you doing more to stuff the run? I'm, I'm just are, – are, are the stats skewed in a game? Like, no, are, I, think, I think they did a lot of – I mean, they did a lot of motion plays. They had a lot of, you know, Cam out in the option. And and truthfully, Damian Harris was a freaking sledgehammer hitting the hole and, and turning out yards after contact like a beast. I mean, it, it is, there's some credit to that to that line that the teams knew that they were going to run the ball. It's just a matter of where they were going to go and, you know, man up on your guy. And the Patriots own line held. Um, I I disagree that Tooney will be back. I think he's going to want top dollar on the market. So I think your Williams pick is is going to be to replace him. So who, who rushed by the for way. the Pats? I mean, Damien Harrison finished with Remember Rex Burkhead six. started off? He was like really hot the first couple of games, and then he Picks got hurt. everybody. And oh, yeah, then it's, Sony it's six, Michelle had a big game, and then... Yeah, I'm just surprised because um, 691 rushing yards for the season for Damien Harrison. For Damian yeah, Harris, he did that. Like, he did that in like six yeah. games. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not knocking him. I'm just saying. I, I just. I'm trying to think of like. The it was season. Sony, Mich- Sony Michelle, Rex Burkhead, Cam Newton, James White. I mean, they were throwing. They were throwing people all over the place. Yeah. So, because we, I was trying to think. Did anybody Bird. stand out as a thousand yard rusher by himself? And no, it, it was a piecemeal. No, they didn't. Yeah, it was piecemeal. Yeah. yeah. And see, that's to, to me like mentally. I'm just but like used to Rex Burkhead thing. went off against the Raiders. He had like three touchdowns that game. He was just mm-hmm. running and catching, and you know, and then right. another game, Sony Michelle went off, and then Damian Harris took it down the stretch. So I mean, they they pieced it together. Totally, because between the two slugging, of them, they made it. Slugging, they made it. They had a thousand yard rusher between the two of those guys, and you throw Burkhead in, who added another three hundred yards. So a total right. thirteen hundred yards between three running backs. Right. That's why I, my perception was they don't have a great run game because it's broken up. It's like all right, but. I guess and they had a lot of design design yeah. run plays with Cam Newton. You had yeah, his, right. his yeah. You didn't add Newton's runs well. into that either. Yeah. So the nope. stats stats don't lie. I'm just for my like I'm I'm like geez, I watched these games. I just didn't, never thought of these guys as like a thousand yard rusher, and I was right. But as a whole, they had a great season. So I apologize. My my perception is wrong. So can I can I go to my my other more deeper? Please do. Please do. <laughs> Dare I say, dark horse free agent? <laughs> yeah. What's the dark horse? <laughs> so I'm going to stick with with the running theme here. In a way, in a way, in a way. And it's a guy. He was. I had. A, a I had a. He, uh, had, he has feet and runs. <laughs> I had a. Well, this guy. I had a soft spot for this guy last last season, and, and I'm kind of <laughs> pulling the uh, the Azar uh, agenda card here when I when I say this. But uh, can you Drake I coming do, back? <laughs> No, no, no. Oh. I do think because it's another need that the Patriots needed, and that's a tight end. And and I think this guy is somebody that Belichick was was high on uh, in years past, and that's John O. Smith. John O. Smith's not going to cost a lot of money to bring him in. He's a big, 
physical tight end who blocks. And you know, Belichick wants the good blocking tight ends. I don't know uh, exactly his numbers last year, but I know the year before he was second only to, I think, Kittle uh, on yards after the catch in um, uh, for tight ends. So he's capable of doing that. He started off on fire last year with Tennessee and then, uh, and then kind of fizzled out offensively, but his blocking was still there. Of course he, he led, you know, uh, the blocking for, for Derrick Henry to get his 2000 yards. So he seems like a Belichick guy. He seems a guy that's going to come in they, again. They need a tight end and, and Belichick has spoken very highly, highly of him in the past. He, he loves this guy. So he's a guy that I'm kind of predicting he might, he might end up coming to the Patriots. He might be the, the next Pat's tight end that, that he brings in. He kind of fits the mold. Interesting. I wouldn't disagree with that. All right, Jarvis, why don't you give us your... Uh... All right. Well, so after hearing John, I, I'm i going to... I'm going to put different em- uh, emphasis on different positions, but, but actually just at different times, the same position. So... Obviously, he didn't pick who who I think is the best free agent out there. Either he com- completely fooled everybody by putting on a free agent performance, but that kid out of Tampa Bay that absolutely wrecked every team he played in the playoffs, that Levante David, he covered everyone out of the backfield. He could cover receivers, tight ends. He smashed in the running game. I mean, this guy never came off the field and was always making plays, so he is my dream free agent, throw everything at him to sign him and just have him wreak havoc in new England for four years. I would love that. However, it's probably not a reality, right? So if I would say there is the need that, that they would have is still at linebacker. Cause I think that they had nobody to kind of stay with, you know, tight ends, fill the holes. And they kind of like that versatile linebacker. They do have a lot of the rookies, but there's just not a lot of trust. So what I would like to see them to do is is take a couple of those Patriot style free agents. So you got to get you get a guy coming out of uh, Carolina, Russell Okung, who was a vaunted left tackle for a long time in Seattle. And he's just kind of old kicking around on one year deals, kind of like that Patriots, you know, so to the Trent Williams point. But I think Russell Okung will be had at a third of the price and take a little bit else, you know, extra of that money. And if you're going to sign an edge guy, the same situation is Melvin Ingram coming out of San Diego or L.A. or whatever. He's been really good. He had a really down year last year, and I think they're going to move on from him. But there's still a lot of talent. If they kind of flip him in and out with Chase Winovich, I think it'll kind of help Winovich learn. And if you pair him kind of like you were saying with Watt and Chandler Jones, it'll help. I think that could give the pressure that they really didn't have. The other kid I like that. um, So if they're going to go cheap on everything they can spend a little bit more is um azar this is a nod to you that the buffalo linebacker matt milano okay i i I think he's he's an underrated little little player and i I like him a lot so if they don't get a line if they get a linebacker and it's not david i kind of hope it's him so why why does azar like milano because he's a buffalo 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 guy he's just okay he's on buffalo so all right so I, I want them to invest in the defense. And I think if they do it like that Patriot way, Melvin Ingram or whatever, it kind of gives them the flexibility to go with Russell Okung as like another flyer to shore up the line. But if they don't get David, there's another free agent that I think is really boring. But God, I, if I watch the Patriots give up another 120 yard rushing game, there's um, a defensive tackle who's an absolute monster out of the Giants, uh, Tomlinson. This guy is just a tank, and they always have these defensive tackles that are just wrecking machines. Will Fork, Ty Warren. Remember Washington, Ted Washington way back in the day? I mean, these guys were just beasts in the middle, and that's when we were at our best. And even, you know, I I just think they need to get some help on the interior line because we're losing everybody. Lawrence Guy's a free agent. Adam Butler's a free agent. and Name me somebody else that plays on the interior. So I I think they're going to throw – he's the best – tackle that's out there if i was looking at the stats from all he's the best interior guy that can play the interior dalvin thompson um, is that what you said yeah from the giants yeah that's Tom interesting Wilson. okay that's an interesting play because he's not sexy i was like well you gotta have something so i think that i think they should throw a little bit at uh Corey davis the wide receiver that was cast out of tennessee because of aj brown um 
you know, I think him, he's, he's a guy that was a first, I think he was a first round pick or a high pick anyway. And he had a lot of talent and he's just kind of muddling around. So another one of those Patriots retool projects, I was thinking about tight end too. And the Colts had two tight ends that were nasty. And I think like one of the Trey Burton is just forgotten. He was in, he was the heir apparent to Zach Ertz. And then he left because Ertz resigned, went to Chicago and he kind of never jived with Trubisky. And then he ended up in um, Indianapolis, but Mo Ali Cox, who's also a free agent emerged. And he is a monster too. If they can get one of those two guys, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. We mentioned Cox. I mentioned Cox a while ago. In, uh, yeah. One of our so, podcasts. but I, I, I don't know how. Like, I, I don't really have faith that the Colts are going to let him go, being so young and so talented. So, I think Trey Burton. But if they sign Burton and they let Cox go, then I, I, either one is a toss-up for me. But I'll take one of them. Okay. You guys are saying Cox too many times. <laughs> yeah, just gonna. Say, <laughs> you know, just what's stop. worse, his name is like Mo Alley. <laughs> Mo Alley Cox. I don't want to say Alley Cox. He's got quite a name. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's it. So I would say Levante David is up top. And then I have like a Melvin Ingram, Matt Milano line, um, T- uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, and then Russell Okung, Corey Davis, and one of those two tight ends. Wow. You throw okay. a whole bunch of, bunch of guys. Yes, he throws a lot. He's, he's a haymaker. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I didn't know which way I wanted to go. And I was like, well, we just you give some avenues here. Well, I, I got to give you credit, Jarvis, because you actually were reading my mind because I was going to go for the interior defensive line. That was what I'm thinking because this, you know, I was thinking where was the weakness in the defense that finished seventh in the league? And it's they gave up a lot of rushing yards. Oh, that game to middle. Miami. Oh, that right? game, it, that Miami game stands out where we just we just got gashed up the middle and couldn't stop anything. Yeah, 26th in the league. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and we finished 26th in the league in stacks. Right. So we weren't. Yeah. Making sacks, and we weren't stopping a lot of run. <laughs> so, uh, Cox and making sacks. What a podcast! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's getting late. That's why we're just just yeah. we're just throwing it out. But so Dalvin Tomlinson is someone I was considering. But they have an, another uh, a name that I was thinking from the Giants was Leonard Tomlinson. I mean Leonard Williams. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the two names together. So yeah. they out of the top five interior defensive linemen though, that was ranked on the Athletic, Leonard Williams was number one. And Dalvin Thompson yeah, was number two. And he, he's asking, um, I think he's asking for like $11 million is what he's uh, signing. The I'm projection to... for signing? Not projection. I thought, I think, he, I, I, I thought I, he would be higher than that. No, I'm sorry. I think, um, what the heck, um, $20 million is the franchise tag if the Giants resign him. I apologize. I think he's oh, right, making yeah. $11 million. So, so he's, a, he's a pretty high, hefty price, but he finished last year with um, – 11 sacks and uh, let's see, finish back up. career best, 11 sacks last year. And so he was someone I was thinking that could serve two roles, help them with the, in the area of improving their sacks and being a big guy in the middle. <laughs> I can't say anything without making these guys giggle with the, uh, uh, you know, they were saying the market value, the article that I was reading about them was the market value is currently sitting around $11.2 million. So if his franchise tag is 20 million. He's not signing for 11 million. No. So he's going to demand some money. So, yeah. So, so that's Leonard Williams, they're, they're showing that, that he could, he could potentially get up to $20 million a year. Uh, yeah. Cause the franchise tag, right? Like it's, it would cost him 20 million to sign him for at that price. So yeah, I've, I heard uh, the Panthers might, might be looking to sign him for four years, 80 million, but. Um, so the, so that what they, I mean, it's a long shot, but it's someone that I thought was a need and that got in the giants are most likely going to try to resign them. Seahawks were second. And in, in this article, Titans were looking, they say would be a good fit for them. Cleveland Browns have room for them. Cleveland Browns would be an interesting play. I can't believe Dolphins. those teams still have money. The, the Titans and the Browns have thrown money at everyone every year. And the Dolphins, like, I, I just can't believe their money. The Browns have 25 million still left in cap space. So they can get a big name. I don't know how the Titans would do it. They only have five million in cap space. So I'm not sure with this article how it makes sense. But right. hey, maybe they got to cut some players. Um, so that's that was one area. I'm with jo- uh, Jarvis. I just think that area needs help. And and I know Belichick is all about defense first. Like he's gonna like to John's point, build a strong run game, and have a solid defense, and just have the quarterback be a, more of a game manager. At this point, I think that's what's going to end up being. And I think going to Big Meat's point of. Um, tight ends there's a tight end that i think could come very cheap for them that's a young kid and he came from st louis i mean la now i'm sorry uh gerald everett is someone that he averaged about 400 yards each season the last two seasons but he's a young kid 
And I had the stats on him from size wise. He's about 6'3, 240 pounds. He's a tight end young kid that I can see them bringing in for cheap yeah. money and feeling him out. Um, he's got, if I recall, I thought he had good hands as a tight end. Yeah, he was, he was, but he was always with Higby and, and had suck Goffle throwing to him. Yeah. So I, I think there, there might be some potential upside for him as uh, I don't know, but like John's point, you bring yeah. in someone that's a pass blocker. I don't know where he was in the combination for the, in that area. Like what's his, was his strength in um, run blocking, but there's some intriguing tight ends out there. That's for sure. Some I don't think they're going to go for ones. Hunter Henry. I don't see. I think Hunter Henry. I don't think he's going to come in. Uh, Hunter Henry already said he wants to play someplace that has an established quarterback. I don't think he's going to dangle Cam okay. Newton yeah. in, in front of him. Now, what about Jerry Cook? That was just cut from yeah. the uh, yeah. Saints. Yeah, he's, he's another. He's one. a big guy. Yeah, he's yeah. six. He's six five or something, right? He's six, been six, around. Five, right? He's been around yeah. a while. I don't know how good of a uh, blocker he is, but he's. But there, like I said, there's a lot of like those middle of the road uh, tight ends, and and anything would be better than. Izzo that, that oh. the Patriots had last year. They didn't have any tight end. No. So, you know, you go years and years with a great tight end and then nothing. Oh, so, in the same I mean, we, years and years with a great quarterback and then nothing. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the year, uh, unlike any other year with the Patriots, because um, we've never had to sit here in the offseason and say, gee, they, they need a lot. Um, you know, you're always kind of set at certain positions. And this year you're, you're going into the season thinking, I don't know where to begin. You know, right. offensive bad. line, quarterback, receivers, linebackers, defensive line. If at some point, you know, you're going to have to shore up the, the secondary as well because, you know, those guys so aren't they, getting any younger. That was the other thing is I, I saw a, a what do you call um, not a rumor, but yeah, maybe a rumor, but that there is leaks coming out that a Gilmore trade is a foregone conclusion. And upon the start of the league year, we're going to find out right away that he's gone. I wouldn't. Wow. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, the, on the on the bright side with the Patriots going into the season is that they do have a lot of money under the cap to spend. So hopefully they they spend it wisely. Um, right. They're third uh, in the league in terms of how much cap space they have, um, seventy two million, um, and that and that you know that dries up pretty quick once you start signing these guys. But at yep. least you have more of the control over that money that you could spend when uh, in free agency if. Because they, the one thing that you keep hearing about uh, a lot of the the sports media are talking about is, you know, every year when players came here, they wanted to come here to play with Tom Brady. Right. Um, there was, the, I mean, the team was championship caliber team, and you could you could get people to come here. Now, what's the draw? Like, do you want to really come here and listen to Belichick yell at you, you know, all the time Ugh, and like play in the cold and, and not have any fun? And it's like you just, and that's what players want to do. They want to go to. Teams right. down and want to have Tampa fun, Bay. but they also want to win as well. It's, it's hard. It's going to be hard to kind of draw people into into playing for the Patriots again. You just yep. got to. That's not something we're used to. You, you, yeah, have you to just got to pay them. them. They'll yeah. come if you pay them. And I think yeah. I think to Jarvis's point. I mean, if they sign twenty million for a top flight, you know, defensive lineman that could put pressure, you know, um, and create generate some sacks, and I think that's money well spent. I think that's. <laughs> Jarvis can't. The word sacks just is just getting his big round face. <laughs> no, so it's, ta- it's who's the guy, who's the guy they should bring in again? Who's the guy you guys were talking about earlier? Which one? Oh, the you, uh, you know which one? Cox. Yeah. <laughs> Cox, the Alley Cox. Oh, all right. We're, we're, we're getting tired and punch drunk oh, here. Yeah. Right. Slap getting, happy. Yeah. I think the I think the side effects from my COVID vaccine are kicking in. <laughs> Well, you did. You did dress up like an old man, and you go out there with the walker. You sneak to get in to get your vaccine. I did not. I did yeah. not. I walked right in. I, yeah, I'm sure. They look at I that nice. No. You, look at this round face. Does this look healthy to you? <laughs> no, I said I had a comorbidity. <laughs> <laughs> I've been put. I've been on the R three. I've been on the R three diet to qualify for a COVID I was vaccine. Say, was, was that one of the uh, the one of the side effects? Is the yeah thirty percent thirty percent BMI. 30% well, BMI. I'm, you yeah. chub up those cheeks. You're in there. You should go. Well, I'm, I'm above that. I'm above yeah, that. You, you, need, you need more than one. You need you need that and something else. And I'm a smoker. You know. <laughs> oh, no. That's one. 
You didn't read really? the list, did you? Yeah. I did read the list. No, but it's not just because you're a smoker, isn't it? No, it's because I'm an obese smoker. Get it right. I have two. <laughs> okay. So you just got to uh, say you're right, a we're, smoker. No, we're not going to go on this podcast and promote <laughs> cutting in line so elderly people can't get a vaccine while you get in there with your fake. Uh... Hey, listen, everybody, get just get in. I... Just get in. That's my advice to you all. Just sign up and get in. <laughs> The, anything, say, anything to get ourselves to Tampa. Let's. Yeah, let's there you that's go. right. Tampa comes uh, first. <laughs> I can't wait for Tampa. Oh, now you got me think. I wonder if this is our three's master plan. Just eating everything. All those donut pictures. He's just trying to get. He's trying to hit that weight point just so he can go in and uh, get his vaccine. That makes that's sense. It. That's it. He's an evil it's the genius. Hap- <laughs> it's the happiest way to qualify. <laughs> I love it. All right, boys. Anything? All any right, closing Jess. thoughts? Nope. No. No, <laughs> not for you people. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> All right, no. Costanza, you're done. Leave it on a high note. All That's right, guys. Until next week, we'll talk All to right. you guys. Yeah. yeah. Take care.